hey guys welcome back to my channel this is my review married at first sight season 10 episode 8 to all of my subscribers you know i love and appreciate each and every one of you if this is your first time on my channel welcome make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you can come and hang out with me every time i upload a video all right so let's get into it um i want to start off with the group sessions the girls were hanging out together and the guys had their own little separate meetup um starting with the girls so they had a little picnic in the back of what looked like somebody's backyard um mika revealed that mike her and mike are living together not only are they living together but they are sleeping in the same bed and of course everybody is like hanging on the edge of their seat i don't know why everybody is so vested in mika and mike's situation um maybe because they're the first couple that had the big issue i don't know but whenever my whenever mika speaks it's like everybody is so consumed with what's going on with her and mike but anyway so she lets them know they're living together they are sleeping together in the same bed um you know she was saying they've come a long way they still have a long way to go on the other side of town mike is telling the guys things are good they're getting to a comfortable place with each other um so they're moving everything's on the up and up mindy she lets the girls know zach has not moved in but she's still committed mika's giving her advice you know to allow him to come back if he wants to because that's what happened with her marriage and they're good now um so of course that makes mindy smile and make her optimistic mindy is looking for anybody to co-sign her mess <laughs> any any hope anybody can give her she's all for it so zach is telling the guys you know he didn't move in um that he's going to his own pace and Derek tried to offer a little advice to tell him that you know be careful with that because you live in a part you're not really giving yourself a chance to get to know each other and that's the whole purpose right now is to get to know each other during these eight weeks so that you can decide at the end whether or not you know you want to stay married so he advised that to him i think he went in one ear not the other um and then derek you know he told them that um as far as he and katie's marriage he didn't expect himself to fall in love at the end of the eight weeks because you know you can't rush feelings um katie's telling the girls they've hit a plateau and that um derek told her there was no way he would fall in love with her in eight weeks and i don't know why she keeps saying that that's not it's not what he said that's not what i got he basically was saying he doesn't think it's possible not saying that it won't happen or that he doesn't want it to happen but that is he doesn't think it's possible to fall in love with someone that fast and bottom line is because he said he's never fallen in love before so he doesn't know to me that's the opportunity for her to you know impress him and, and not necessarily make him fall in love because you can't make someone fall in love they're gonna feel what they feel but i'm looking at it like put your best foot forward be yourself and hope for the best that i mean that's pretty much all you can do but if you're if him making that comment is pushing you back and making upsetting you and making you feel some type of way you're going to sabotage a possible good thing in my opinion um anyway so the girls was giving katie a pep talk and they was like you know at the end of the day when you think about it you guys just met <laughs> like just go with the flow and just let things happen naturally um jessica was telling them that everything is good she brought up the finances again and you know how she makes more than austin it doesn't really bother her as long as he is motivated and she was saying in the meantime he's going to be doing the cooking to balance things out aka house husband um austin he didn't really get a chance to add a lot to the conversation when he was with the guys 
only thing he was saying was that Jessica was very particular about cleaning this. And then that's when Brandon stormed in. So, yeah, we didn't get a chance to hear um, the rest of what Austin wanted to say. So Brandon shows up and one thing I noticed was, okay, in the beginning when the group was together and everybody was like, oh, you know, Brandon's missing. Where's Brandon? Mike was quick to say, oh, he's at work. You know, you know, he's probably at work. And they all were kind of shocked. Like, and I think it was um, Zach who said on a Saturday. Now, mind you, people do work on a Saturday. So that wasn't far-fetched. But I don't know. He said it like they knew his schedule or something. I don't know if they all talked about their jobs before. But Zach seemed pretty shocked that he was working on a Saturday. But anyway, so Mike was like, yeah, yeah, you know, he's probably at work. I assume he and he and Brandon talk, but it, it was just weird the way he was saying it. And the reason why I say that is because when Brandon showed up, um, Mike looked surprised. And he said, so Brandon was like, hey, you know, what's up, guys, blah, blah, blah. You know, can you make room for me to sit down, whatever. So he sits down and everybody was like, oh, oh, hey, what's up? And Mike was so quick to say oh yeah hey hey what's up you know how was work and he kind of gave him this look like i'm gonna need you to go with that because this is what i just told them so this is what i think happened i think mike and brandon talk and brandon probably was like i don't think i'm gonna come you know probably because he's still embarrassed about what went down and he probably in his feelings i'm like i don't feel like being bothered and mike would probably was like nah dude you know you gotta come through and Brandon probably said uh, you know I don't know if I if I show up I show up if I don't I don't I don't know if they agreed to say he was at work or they left the conversation at that and so when his name came up Mike just threw out there he's probably at work shocked to see Brandon come through and just threw out there yeah how was work that's just what I'm thinking guys and I'm going by the way Mike was so quick to say it. not only that the, his body language yeah, I know how it is when y'all lying or coming up for a friend and they come around and you like, oh shit, and then you giving them the look like, uh, yeah, so how was work? What did you do? Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so Brandon sits down and, you know, he's talking about the situation, what happened um, in Panama the last day. And, um, you know, he was talking about how you know they they met with pastor kyle and he mentioned that it was kind of like an ambush it's brandon is always the victim it seems he's always the victim now he's telling them they you know he apologized apparently he apologized prior or i guess at the airport but you know he's talking about a situation it's like oh you know that wasn't him he just had a moment he had a meltdown whatever and um then when he says everything's okay you know he talked to taylor and they met with pastor cow instead of him just saying you know we talk we we on the same page now we're moving forward it's like he's saying that they they ambushed him how was that an ambush it's almost like he that well, he doesn't i don't know if he doesn't understand or he just doesn't care pastor cow meets with every everyone is experiencing the same Thing. all the seasons pastor cow the experts they meet with all of the couples whether you're doing very very well or whether you're struggling they meet with everybody so why he felt like he was being ambushed like dude you're you're not you're no different he's going to meet with everybody <sighs> but that's brandon but anyway so um he did tell them that you know he is in a separate um bedroom he was like you know he's just gonna follow her lead whatever she's comfortable with um but right now they're moving forward they're doing good he's just in a separate bedroom right now so taylor is with the girls and she's mentioning um that brandon did tell her 
that he apologized to all the couples at the airport they all say yes he did and um you know she just gave them the rundown of the meeting with pastor kyle and his advice on them hitting the reset button so that pretty much was what was discussed at the guys and girls meeting so moving on to mika and mike they're at the spice shop spice tea shop whatever um shopping and mika's teasing mike about his lack of spice knowledge <laughs> you know it wasn't too much going on they were just doing a lot of little little shopping and spices and um later they were at home still you know still getting settled putting pictures in frames and just getting ready for their housewarming party um anyway so while they're there mika brings up the fact that mike still wasn't wearing his ring and she wanted to discuss his reasonings as to why he initially took it off um, so he explains that he felt he failed the marriage and it was hard for him to wear it being as though what went down and he just felt like he was he was a disappointment and I guess that he wasn't worthy or it didn't feel right to wear the ring um, her response was you know so every time things get bad or we have a hard time or we have an argument you know you feel like you're going to take it off you know you don't feel like it's mandatory to wear it now i understand where she was coming from i mean you're married it doesn't mean that everything is going to be perfect you're going to have ups and downs you're going to have arguments you're going to have disagreements there gonna be plenty of times where you might not even like each other but you're still married you still said vows you you know you still quote unquote committed to each other and in this case committed to this process just because you guys hit a bump in the road or every time you have an argument doesn't mean oh let me take this ring off you're still married and i mean and unless you plan on just calling the quiz period the ring should stay on <laughs> so i get what she's saying in terms of that my issue is why I keep bringing it up and i've said this in my last review i think my last two reviews i'm a firm believer let's have the conversation i want to hear my side let me hear your side let's figure out how we're going to move forward and let's move forward but you constantly coming back to the same problem you constantly asking the same questions thinking you're going to get a different answer you're going to hit a brick wall every time it's either we call it quits or we deal with it agree to disagree and keep it moving so at this point, I don't really know why she keeps bringing it up because he's not he's not changed his answer. Now, mind you, she's not even bringing up um, the plane conversation, but everything everything revolves around that. So, yeah, so she's like, you know, you can't just take it off anytime. You know, we hit a bump in the road, we have an argument, whatever. And um, he basically was just sitting there it's almost like he's trying to be mindful like look i'm not going back and forth you know he did answer the question he was very calm about it and she, it's like she just keeps coming at him um anyway so they agreed to they both should wear their rings he agreed to and he was like yeah you're right i feel like you know everything is good um i agree with you i'm gonna put my ring back on he put his ring back on so they both had their rings on by the time um the friends and family came over so the friends and family come over they show up and everybody seemed to have a good time they're playing games they're laughing have a good time having a good time um mike and mika's mom you know what okay i'm gonna say this now i know i know i can get a little you know and overanalyze things sometimes but I, I i pay attention to every little thing so some things just stick out to me it seemed to me like mika nitpicks of mike and like i said i don't think it's malicious at all but i think okay and I'm not saying this is where she's coming from, but 
some people or some females will look at Mike as weak. Okay. I think even though there's they seem to be on a, a you know, same page right now and on good terms, she's not over the conversation that happened on the plane. She's she's just not like like she's not. She's not over it. Um, I think it's gonna always be in the back of her mind. And so I think it's it's almost like I don't how can I put it? I don't wanna say get back or revenge or whatever, but it's like she it's it's little things. Like so for example, um, when they were in the spice shop, it's like she always just wants to throw jabs at them. You know, and, and I and I like her personality. I think Mika is hilarious. She's funny to me. Um but he and he is uber sensitive. He he is. But for example, so at the spice shop when, you know, she was laughing at him about, you know, spices and oh, you only got one pepper and he was saying, um, she's like, you know, what do you know how to cook? And, you know, he was explaining it and you could tell he gets it bothers him. And I think she know it bothers him, so that's why she does it. So he was like, Oh, you know, and then he seemed when she seems to be on the same page and like they're getting along, you could tell he's really, really happy about it. And um so then he said, uh, oh, you know, let's you know we have to get some tea. We can't be in this shop that sells tea and not get any. So there they're walking off. She was like, I don't even drink tea. It's like it's little things like that. It's like even if you don't it's something that he suggested you know what i mean like he's trying to connect with you he's excited that you guys are shopping together and that you're you know even the smallest little thing you guys trying to you shopping for spices okay but he's trying to add something to it and say oh you know let's try something different let's try some different teas i don't even drink tea okay you don't so when you don't don't bust this bubble that's something he suggested when you get home and he tries to brew, brew you some tea, just take a sip and say, oh, I don't like it. Or, oh, that's okay. There are ways to get around where you're not always being negative when someone suggests something. Or negative when someone, you know, presents something to you or say something or do something. Even if you don't like it, you don't have to always come out and say, I don't like that. I don't want that. I don't agree with that. There, there are ways to do it. Anyway, I digress. Um. Anyway, so the family is over, like I said, and they're having fun. And the questions. So I don't know who came up with the question because the question that Mika read was, how many times a week do you think Mike work out? Now, I don't know if he came up with that. It kind of came off like that's, that was Mika's question. And again, I'm taking it as a little dig. I, I, I'm i sorry. I just I just do. And so after they were trying to um, guess, I think they all guessed like five days. So he said six. And they were like six. And he seemed excited. Like he was ready to, um, you know, explain what he does. So one of the guys, I think it was Mika's male cousin, he was like, oh, okay, six, you know, you're going to have to tell me, you know, so what do you do? And as soon as Mike said, what do you say, three days a week he does yoga? And the guy cuts him, was like, oh, you know, you can stop right there. And Mike looked so, <laughs> he just kind of looked sad to me. Like, he was so excited to explain his workout regimen, <laughs> even though, I mean, I get it. It doesn't look like he works out six days a week. There's different types of workout. But he was excited and here he is getting ready to explain it and you sh shutting him off. Oh, never mind. You know, you don't have to go no further. You know, so that's the type of little stuff I'm talking about. Now, I know people play, people joke, you know, and yeah, if you're uber sensitive, it's going to really hit you harder than it would somebody else. Anyway, so later on, Mike meets with Mika's mom in the bedroom and um he was asking her for advice on how he could be you know a better person a better husband for her daughter and you know she told him look I'm gonna give you the same advice I gave Mika you just have to be patient with each other 
take it day by day and pick your battles and that's what I was saying about the whole everything doesn't have to be I don't like this I don't want that I don't this I don't that you don't everything just doesn't have to be a, a an argument a disagreement a battle just some things you don't even have to say anything so i thought that was good advice um yeah so that's where they left off with that all right moving on to Derek and katie all right so katie is meeting with her mom Derek is meeting with his dad and so Katie and her mom had a pretty uh intense conversation. Um Katie just seems like she's over it. And I, I I think I mean she revealed some things later on about Derek, but I think for the most part the the big thing with her is the fact that what she's hearing is he's not going to fall in love with her at the end of the experiment that is weighing very very heavy on her so anyway um so her mom is asking her you know how are things going with Derek and Katie was like oh he's all right <laughs> she's like he's all right and what did she say oh she just, her mom was like you know give me five things that you like about him and she was just like you know he's kind sweet comforting and he's smart in some ways so I'm like okay um, and he seems like he'll be good with kids. So her, um, her mom was like, no, oh, so she mentioned that he was too comfortable <laughs> when he talks about, um, bowel movements, which, yeah, it's, it's a little, when they show clips of him always saying, oh, he about to go release a load or he, I can very well see how that can be irritating and obviously it's getting on her nerves i can see where it can get irritating and you know it made me think of because Derek seems really immature it made me think of and, and let me know if you guys experienced this back in the day when you were teenagers and you know you had your little boyfriend or girlfriend the thing was if you could pass gas in front of each other that was like love <laughs> I, I can't be the only one that was the thing you you could burp or you could fart in front of each other and that was like oh you're really really comfortable so I don't know if that's where his head Derek is immature y'all and I don't think aside from him saying he never been in love I don't think Derek has had many relationships period I really don't um so I don't know if that's his way of letting her know that he's like really I don't know I I I don't know that's but that's where my mind went because I do remember as a teenager but your little boyfriend and girlfriend that's what we 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 did that and that's what we talked about anyway so um yeah so she was saying that <laughs> that that was getting on her nerves because it's like every single time um he gotta make a bowel movement he has to announce it uh, so she also told her how Derek basically said there's no way he'll he'll love her in eight weeks. And again, that's not what I heard from Derek, but that's what she's telling people. So her mom was like, well, you know, maybe he's being realistic because of the time frame. I mean, I guess some people do feel like, I don't know if Katie is in her mind is like we're married and we've already had sex so he should be feeling some type of way about i don't know i don't know but her mom was like look maybe he's you know he's being realistic considering the time frame and then she said honestly she doesn't know if there's any better out there now with katie and this ex-boyfriend okay one minute she's crying she's making it seem like oh they were so serious and um you know he told her he loved her and this and that but then who was she talking to somebody and she said this guy she said the guy she was casually dating so now which one is it and were you in a deep relationship serious relationship with this guy who wouldn't commit until he found out you was going on this show or was this somebody pretty much 
friend's benefit. And he just didn't, he wasn't committed to being in a relationship with you. Like, something's not adding up because her story changed. Anyway, so then Katie was, like, um, pretty irritated. She was, she, she got pretty irritated with her mom and, um, you know, was saying her comment was pessimistic and, she didn't appreciate that in her life. And then she made a comment about, oh, so her mom was like, look, you know, I've been there, done that. I think her mom said she was married twice. So she was like, I'm giving you advice, you know, based off of my experience. And Katie just shut down. She was like, well, maybe your marriage didn't work because, you know, you, what did she say? Something about, you know, yours wasn't based off of love you were pregnant and that's how you ended up getting married and i'm looking like she is such an entitled brat she really is and her mom looks so sad and she was like you know i just i'm i'm 26 and i just you know if it's not working and it, i'm not getting what i want i'm not gonna stay around and put up with it and that's why you're single and that's why you on this show but anyway, so Derek is with his dad, and they're talking, and um, same questions, you know, how are things going? Um, Derek basically was just letting his dad know that things are kind of stagnant, there's no, you know, sparks flying like it was in the beginning, and, um, you know, but, but, th but things are good, so you know, he was saying, um, so his dad was like, look, it's not all about fireworks and and he was like you know this generation nowadays they kind of have this this thought where you know the fireworks that you feel in the beginning like that's something that you're gonna feel every day and that's just not realistic um you know and he was like you know you're gonna have to grow on it you you'll know what did he say something about you'll know that this person is the one when you can't see yourself without them and um so Derek was just saying that you know basically repeating what we said to Pastor Cal and about there not being any substance um and it's like they are just roommates basically roommates that are having sex um you know he was saying he can't he doesn't feel like he can love her right away right now it's possibly later but right now he just feels like they're stagnant they're intimate but there's no substance there and so his dad was like if he were katie he his feelings would be hurt you know and he was like you know why would you say that to her that's not something you should say if i were her you know my feelings would be hurt and of course Derek is looking like <sighs> it's like I understand if you are not if you've never been in love or if you didn't have that much experience as far as relationships but I, I will look at he's old enough to have common sense like I don't know I don't know I mean anyway so in his dad's confessional he was saying that's when I was like he you know nowadays people are just so caught up in the moment thinking that everything has to be this firework moment and that's something that you know if you're not feeling it every day then that means things are not working out and this person isn't for you and that's not the case so later on um the friends show up and show up at their house for the housewarming and one of them was asking about you know the other couples and katie was like oh well you know we're the best out of all the couples <laughs> um now i would say jessica and austin are the best out of all the couples but um so katie asked the girls to come into the bedroom with her now so brand not brandon Derek had a female friend there and the female friend was like do you want me to come and katie was like no not not yet i thought that was so rude <laughs> i get it she wants to talk to her girl but i guess my thing is unless you're going to be saying something negative why i can't come in here i just thought that was pretty rude but she was like no you can't come with us yet 
so anyway basically they were showing katie and they were talking to her girls they were showing um derek out there talking to his boys and everybody just want to know about the sex pretty much um so they both told their friends that you know they crossed the line and they did it now katie correct me if i'm wrong so she was saying how she is the one who initiates sex with Derek. Not only that, she said, and correct me if I'm wrong, when her girlfriend asked her something, she was like, well, he can do better. What she said, he can get better at aiming. He, he could try to get a better aim. Now, I don't know <laughs> what that means. I have my idea, but I'm like, is she talking about initiating it? Because when you say an aim, I'm thinking you, you know, <laughs> you talking about aiming, like getting it in. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm like, I don't know. It just, it, okay, here's my thing. I'm wondering if Derek was a virgin. I, I, Y'all, I don't know either. I'm, I'm thinking I'm getting virgin vibes from him or he's been with maybe one or two people I, that's just that's just my thought it's my thought on because when he say i've never been in love i mean what is he 27 26 so it, it, it's possible but him saying that then with katie saying what she's saying now it's just it's all kind of that's that's where my head goes pretty much um so Derek is telling his boys you know that um they're good he really likes her same thing he's been saying to Pastor Kyle and his dad they're good um the intimacy is there but there's no substance there there's nothing substantial between them they're just like sexual roommates <laughs> um yeah and that's it so you know his friends was like well you know just love is not something you can manufacture so and people keep it's like people have to keep reminding them y'all just met yes you're married but you're still strangers you're still getting to know each other you're pretty much working backwards so you're still getting to know each other whether it's in the beginning or is in the, it was at the end after marriage so stop putting this pressure on yourselves and these expectations like oh we got to fall in love within a week because we're married no you don't know each other so um anyway they all get back together in the living room now we never saw Derek's female friend go into the room with Katie um the next time we saw her they were all in the living room and his and the female friend asked to see them kiss so they kissed and that was the end of that um later on that night the two of them were in bed they were comparing notes from what you know the other friends um had to say and basically katie is afraid of large crowds like they didn't really reveal much of, of her you know her, her friends didn't Derek friends the female friends so apparently her and um katie did end up talking so katie the friend told katie um that he hasn't had much experience with dating that he doesn't usually approach girls and that he's very particular and that was it with them all right so jessica and austin um jessica comes home from work austin has prepared dinner for her which is one of the key things her bridesmaids mentioned to him at the reception remember when at the reception um the bride and grooms went off to have you know separate conversations little, little meetings with either the bridesmaids or the families and um when he was asking for pointers on you know what he should do to um impress her for them to get along and make the marriage work whatever and they were saying how you know she work long hours and one thing that would be great is if you had dinner waiting for her 
So apparently he was listening and you know he's putting forth an effort. Um, I'm all about whoever gets home first should get dinner started whether you cooking it yourself or you ordering it whoever that's how it works in my household whoever is home first who whoever was off that day does make sure that that dinner is prepared um so anyway so yeah he has dinner ready he's waiting for her and um you know they're having small talk about their day now i can't really tell if they're on the same page with the joking or if jessica is taking slight digs at austin and he's just going with the flow i know y'all look like i said i pay very 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 close attention to certain things um and i don't know if he's just going with the flow as to not rock the boat because of the whole you know she's pretty much the breadwinner so for example um she was asking him you know how many times he hit the snooze button and she was like you know i don't know because i wasn't here since i left for work already um and then she was asking him like you know what time did you finally get up and leave what was it eight thirty, nine o'clock and she's like asking these questions and austin you know he he's saying um well, you know, it took me. What did he say? Because mind you, Austin just didn't never made up his bed at his own house. So he was like, "Well, you know, it, it takes me thirty minutes to, you know, make up the bed." And you know, she's like laughing, like, "Oh no, no, you didn't." And he was like, "Yeah, you know." So they kind of he laughs it off, but you can tell, you know, when somebody is getting to them, but they still kind of smile and play it off with you. Um. So then he was like, no, so then he makes the comments and, um, so Jessica was like, yeah, that's, what did she, okay, so when he, when he said it took him 30 minutes to make the bed, she said, no, it didn't really, she was like, well, you know, that's more likely, like, you were going to do the laundry, I bet. And she throws in, I'm just teasing. So he turns around and says, well, I mean, I, I. You know, I've been cooking. Is that not good enough? Of course, he had a smile on his face, but he makes the comment like, and she says, "Yeah, you know, I'm impressed. It was, it was edible." So, again, he's smiling, but you can tell, and he says, "Ah, uh, you know, thanks. Yeah, that's what I was going for. You know, for the food to at least be edible. You know, I'm, I'm glad I hit my target or something like that." And so then she's like, um, oh, you know, so, so you, do you want me to do the dishes? And he was like, nah, I'll do the dishes. So they were like going back and forth about who going to do the dishes. And she was like, well, at least let me, you know, help you. You know, we can do them together. And he's like, no, no, I'm doing the dishes. Now, before that, when they were talking about their day, so when she asked him how it was his day, it's like he didn't want to talk about it. And I don't know if it's because once he did she was going to shoot it down i don't know but he was very hesitant hesitant to talk about his day and he was like, oh, you know whatever it, you know it wasn't wasn't much how was your day and she was like long and he was like yeah yeah you know i know and she asked him something else about his day and he said did he say he only worked 40 40 minutes i heard 40 minutes in there somewhere um anyway so they're going back and forth about the dishes and he was like, no, nah, no, nah, I got it, you know. And she's like, oh, you know, we can do them together. So they get up, and he was like, no, I'm doing the dishes. You know, he had, he had, a, little, he had a little bass in his voice. So she grabs her plate and goes to the kitchen. And she was like, oh, we can put him in the dishwasher. And he was like, oh, the dishwasher's full, you know, because he washed dishes um, earlier. So they opened up the dishwasher, and she was like, oh, you know, I hate doing, I hate unloading the dishwasher. And he basically was like, look, why don't you just go, like, go take a shower. And, um, she was like, oh, okay, you know, well, if, if you don't mind, if you insist, y'all, I'm telling you. So in his confessional, you know, he's basically saying she works hard and, you know, he wants to support her. Um, 
you know, he not, he's not sure what he's, um, she's expecting him to do, but, you know, he wants to make sure that things are balanced and, you know, dinner's ready for her when she gets home and he basically wants to do his part. Okay, here's my thing. I, it kind of comes off like he feel, I don't know what she said to him. I don't know if he feels bad about the fact that she's the breadwinner. I don't know if she said something to make him feel bad that she's the breadwinner. But it's kind of like he's taking on the role of house husband. Let me do the house, which I, listen, I don't have a problem with that. But not at the expense where she's making little comments to him. Like, and this is not where it stopped. Because later on when the company comes over and they're playing games, she's making more comments. Um, anyway, so the friends come over for the housewarming and they start playing beer pong, which I think is the most disgusting game ever. It is, yeah, it's nasty. So... They're playing, of course, Jessica and Austin are on the same team. And <laughs> poor Austin, he's struggling at first. He just cannot get the ball in the cup. And then here come Jessica. Oh, don't worry about it. You know, I'll carry the team. You know, you know, you know, don't even worry about it. And of course, the friends are laughing. Everybody's laughing. So he finally, I guess he gets the hang of it. And he finally makes, you know, hits the target he he throws the um the ball in the cup so she's like oh you know basically it was about time she was like you know because i've been carrying the team um this whole time so yeah that's good you know he finally got one it was just and he's laughing so she said something about um so he was like yeah yeah you know you he was like yeah you're right you it's like it's almost like he don't want to rock the boat so he agrees and go along with it and he's like yeah you um yeah you know you've been carrying the team and then she's like well actually you know i guess i'll say it's been 50 50 and he was like well i guess yeah i made i made like four and she said so who she's like well yeah probably but who's counting and he turns to her and he was like well obviously not you that's what i'm i'm telling y'all it's getting under his skin he's smiling and going along with it but eventually you can joke and laugh and play all you want but when one person is the constant butt of the joke or at the end of the teasing on the other end of the teasing you laugh and smile but eventually it's going to get under your skin and his friends everybody's noticing it you know and she's doing it in front of people I know some of you probably like, girl, it is not that big a deal. That's their sense of humor. But I'm telling you, you can you can sense the body language is bothering him. And he smiles, but he, he comes back at it now. He'll make little comments and be like, yeah, okay. But, you know, obviously you're not counting. When that's sarcasm. Because the whole time she's like, yeah, I'm carrying the team. But anyway, so Jessica takes the girls in the bedroom. Um... One of the girls is Austin's female friend. And so she's asking her, you know, give me some insight. Tell me about Austin. And she pretty much didn't have anything to add. She was just like, you know, he's um, kind, sweet, generous. You know, what you get, what you see is what you get with Austin. Um, so Austin's talking with his, with his boys and was asked, um, you know, what's the best and worst parts you know of being married so far and you know the best part he was saying was instant connection and this is when I say you can tell the friends are noticing Jessica's behavior because one of them was like so you know how are you you know how is your patience level and have you noticed her lack of patience so austin was like yeah you know i noticed her lack of patience but you know he was like it's fine um you know he like a little impulsiveness whatever so it's like 
everybody see it. Austin is saying, yeah, I, I see her lack of patience, but I'm cool with it. It's, you know, it's all good. But trust me, mm -mm. it's all good now, Austin, but you feeling it. You feeling it and you holding it in and you probably going to have flashbacks of, of Mommy Dearest being a mama's boy and your mama ruling you and it's going to all come out because who the hell wants to be married to their mama? I mean, he... I, I'm sure he's used to that and you can tell when Jessica met with um Austin's family you could tell the mama his his mother rules the daddy because the daddy wasn't saying much the mama was speaking for him so the mother was the dominant parent the dominant force female in his life okay now he's either like that's what I'm used to I'll go along with it. She's the breadwinner. I'm not going to say much. I'm not going to rock the boat. I'm going to keep the peace. I'm going to just be the house husband doing my little 40 hours, my little 40, 40 uh, minutes a day at work, and I'm going to keep it moving. Or he's going to snap because maybe he's trying to get away from the domineering mama, you know, and he doesn't want to turn around and marry the same type of woman that he was raised by and trying to get away from. But anyway, okay, so let's get on to Brandon and Taylor. Okay, so Taylor's hanging out with her girls. They're out to eat somewhere, and um, they talked about everything from the wedding day to her seeing Brandon when she walked down the aisle you know and was how did she feel when, when she saw him and she was like she was relieved he wasn't ugly um and I'm just talking about you know how how he was at the wedding very respectful um at the, on the wedding night she was like you know he didn't try anything he was very respectful and then she got into um the first incident on the honeymoon with her filming him sleeping and him jumping out of the bed and not speaking to her afterwards she didn't however mention and i don't know if this was editing but she didn't mention how he went off on her when you know she tried to bring him a drink when she tried to pick up his clothes when she tried to hug on him or whatever how he went off on her like don't touch his clothes don't touch him he don't want that drink but then he turns around and go and buy the exact same drink so she didn't mention that or at least they didn't show her mention it but it did happen um anyway so she's telling them about the last day and how he acted and of course you know they her girls so they like what he said that he did that wow okay so she mentioned how um oh she did mention the whole rose petal thing you know so she was like it it, it wasn't all bad there's this good side to him um that i really like you know he's sweet he could be very sweet calm you know loving in one minute and but then there's this other side of him so later on the friends family come over and taylor pulls her girls in the bedroom and she's like look don't go so hard on him you know because apparently you know they i guess they discuss like they're gonna bring it up so she was like you know you can address it but address it and keep it moving like don't just like beat them up pretty much um so everyone starts arriving and brandon is you know he, he's giving this to <laughs> i'm just like <laughs> y'all know why i'm laughing so brandon is giving the tour of the apartment and lassie aka tyson which is um taylor's dog what is it a collie I, I just call it Lassie. Um, corners Brandon in the room and starts humping his leg. Now, listen, I love dogs. I, I'm, 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 I like puppies, but it, it, I was creeped out because there's something about. I used to want a dog. Y'all yeah, know how I always have to insert my own my own life into these these reviews. But and I used to always say, do I want a dog, a, a boy dog, because of the little of his little pecker? Like we we used to go to the pet shop, pet store, and like just hang out with the puppies to see, you know, get a feel for them, and you know, you play with them, or whatever. And I will always get creeped out by the his little 
little pecker like i didn't like when you're holding it i didn't want it touching me so i can only imagine this big ass dog <laughs> pecker is hard and he's humping on brandon so it was funny but i was creeped out and you could tell brandon laughed it off he was a good sport about it but he he he, he picked that leg up a couple of times and i'm like taylor needs to watch it because i can see brandon <laughs> I can see Brandon kicking that dog. I can see him doing something to her when she's not around. But anyway, but he he was a good sport about it. He was laughing. It was really funny. Um, but apparently Tyson has taken on to Brandon and he's like following him around. Brandon was saying, "Yeah, this is all day." He he, he keeps doing it. So in Taylor's confession, she was saying um, that she Googled about dogs humping people or trying to hump you. And that it was his way of, uh, you know, showing his dominance. And she was like, I guess he's trying to show Brandon how it's done. And Brandon needs to step up, needs to man up and whatever. So at some point, Brandon couldn't even really leave the room. <laughs> the room. Because <laughs> Tyson had him, had him hemmed up, like on the bed. And so um, Taylor had to come in and rescue him but anyway so they all everybody's in the living room um now on brandon's side it was his mom his aunt i believe his aunt boyfriend or husband and i think one or two of his friends so they're all in the living room and just having a small talk and um they just ask him asking brandon how's everything going and he was like oh you know t everything's good taylor's great you know we're doing good you know we had some some issues and that's why you know i'm in the second bedroom over there um and and that's all he needed to say and her friends just started so one of her friends was like um yeah you know based off of what taylor told us it seems like there's two sides to you you know this this nice sweet loving side and then this side that's just manic like this just goes off and um you know her friends were saying how they were concerned you know like how he'll handle future problems like if you can't handle what went on then what's going to happen when the cameras are off when you guys have another disagreement when you're upset about something else like they want to know that their friend is safe and that he is able to handle himself basically so then Taylor has this little, well, I don't want to say little because he was a big guy. I don't know if his name was Tashi or I'm going to call him Tucci. It's T-O-C-H-I. I'm saying Tucci, a.k.a. Debo. <laughs> so he was like, yeah, I hear, I hear you and everything, but, you know, the way you behave wasn't cool, especially towards a female. You know, the fact is, you you know you did and you said what you did and you said and it's just not cool at all so brandon's aunt immediately jumped in and i guess she felt like okay her girls are questioning him but now here come this dude who i mean sorry and i'm not saying guys can't wear floral prints i mean my husband would never because i wouldn't allow it <laughs> we're not we're not doing that but yeah you you big and buff like Debo do but you standing up there with a tight Hawaiian print shirt on so I wouldn't have been too worried about that but Brandon's aunt jumped right in and <laughs> as, as expected I, I wasn't shocked that she did um at all but she jumps in and she's like you know the way um the way he acted because mind you brandon quote unquote told his aunt what happened I, I doubt he told her everything but he did have a conversation with her and i'm sure he told her probably right before the housewarming just so that because he probably knew that taylor's people was going to bring it up so just so that she won't be blindsided he lets her know um something went down in panama and yeah there were issues so the aunt was like you know this is not who brandon really is you know we had a conversation he told me what happened and i have to say i've 
ever since he's been born. I've never heard anyone say they've seen him act like this and I've never seen it um, myself. I've never seen him go off the way he said he did. And so I'm thinking like, okay, this is the most anybody on his side of the family has ever said about him. And you really wasn't saying much because honestly in the beginning of the show the three times that they talked about or they had a chance to talk about Brandon's personality and 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 what type of person he was what they said is kind of matching his behavior what did they say he's very very blunt he speaks his mind he's up front and that's exactly what he that's how he acted that that's how he acted so I get that <laughs> listen auntie such and such I get it that's your nephew that's your family you want you want to stick up for him because uh, y'all notice the mama wasn't saying a word his mother yeah. <sighs> who raised Brandon because the mama act like she Brandon seemed like he probably was raised by his grandmother and maybe his aunt it, his mama, and I know she wasn't in agreeing, agreement with the him being on the show. I get that. But his mother act like she does not know him. Like she has nothing to say about him at all, whether it's good, bad. She contributed saying, you know, he's blunt. She said that much. But other than that, mm-mm. It's like she has nothing to say. So I'm wondering if it's a situation where... He was just raised by grandma and, and mama was one of them, you know, maybe his mother and father had him young. I don't know. Anyway, so one thing that makes me think or feel like, no, this is exactly who Brandon is because during the aunt's confessional, she said, um, what did she say? She was like, yeah, you know, Brandon told me what went on and um, I feel like, how did she put it? She was like, you know, to see him sit there, oh, she know that he's changed and he's grown because to see everybody ganging up on him and he just sat there and didn't say much showed her that he's grown you know that that there's growth so here's my thing okay if you've never seen Brandon go off if that's not his personality and he's this calm cool person what other way would you expect him to behave when everybody was coming to him with these questions and I wouldn't say attack they these are Taylor's friends so I mean if she told them the details as we saw them I can very well understand why they would question him about anything. And I think they were pretty light on him. Okay. So for her to say, well, the fact that he didn't pretty much jump back or didn't say anything shows growth. Well, what other way would Brandon have acted? Because according to you, he doesn't go off. He the way The way he told you he went off, that's not him. That's not who he is. So wouldn't him sitting there not going off and listening to what they have to say wouldn't that be the normal brandon like come on now let me tell you something the fact that brandon acted a fool twice that we've seen leads me to believe that's who he really is okay everyone we've all had a moment where we've said things that we may have regretted that we wish that we could take back or we wish we we hadn't done but the fact that you've said it the fact that you did it that's who you are plain and simple and to me his behavior the extreme that it was that that was no one-time thing that was no and he did it twice so it's not like oh i'm not used to the cameras dude you you showed your ass twice 
And not only that, even when you so-called apologize, it's, it was still with an attitude. Like, well, I, you know, I've already apologized. You know, you need to get over it. So even with the apology, it was still negative and still attitude. So, no, that is who he really is. Don't, uh, yeah, yeah, auntie, I'm, I'm going to need you to shut that down. Anyway, so the aunt was like, you know, that's not who he is, blah, 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 whatever. And so her friends were like you know we we get what you're saying but we don't know him so we're going based off of what taylor told us which was disturbing you know so anyway they they all kind of oh so then taylor jumps in and she's like look it happened you know um but i know another side of brandon she admit that you know she used to go off too she's changed and you know she feel like they could work together pretty much she can help him along so that he can change and not go off or whatever and it happened they've talked about it and they're moving forward this is what she's telling everybody okay so after everybody leaves taylor and brandon they're in the kitchen they're cleaning up and she's talking about the gathering and you know the conversation that was had and you could tell they both were a little wasted taylor seemed more so than brandon and she was just like um you know how did you feel about you know um the conversation that we all had and he was like yeah you know um i get it you know what i'm saying like he understood where her family and friends were coming from and whatever like he 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 said that he was basically expecting um for it to, to have that conversation so then she says well you know as long as you know you continue to be the sweet calm brandon that i know you know everything would be fine everyone gets stressed out you know all the couples there's a level of some stress with all the couples because of you know because they're all going through the same experience so there's a level of stress there and she was just like however you know when you feel like um you know you're getting stressed upset or whatever just talk to her basically instead of flipping out just come and talk to her so he was like okay you know i agree fair enough right instead of leaving it at that she asked so how do you feel about that and you know she's like you know talk to me um don't just agree with what i'm saying and tell me i'm right Let, let's talk and i guess and he was like i said it's fine it's okay i you know fair enough i get stressed out get upset whatever i'll talk it out with you you know versus going off whatever like like what happened happened i apologize let's move on from it you said we were good you know we talked our families talked. we discussed it in front of the families we discussed the past the cow and i'm saying you know moving forward that i'm going to handle you know situations differently but she just kept talking she just kept she was like no i i i want to i want to know what you're feeling i want to know what you're thinking don't just agree with me and she was like i know you i know you're getting tired of me um bringing it up but and he was like i mean i wish we could move on but you know I, i'm just gonna go along with the ride you know if you want to keep talking about it like whatever and she was like well you know you need to give me something else to talk about then like give me something positive to talk about and i'm just like i don't know if i don't know I don't know I, I don't know what Taylor's angle is and I think it's almost like because going back to when she came over to his place to help him pack up and move remember when I said because I, I think Taylor is over I don't think she's harping okay so here's a difference in my opinion between Taylor and Mika Taylor is has moved I don't think she's harping on Brandon's behavior 
I, I, I honestly don't think she's holding on to that. I think she's beyond it. But the thing is, Brandon isn't making any moves towards her. If you if you think about it, he's not acting lovey dovey towards her. He's not acting like he wants to sleep with her. He's not even acting like he's really interested, to be honest. I mean, and I think that is kind of bothering her. Whereas Mika, Mika still wants to talk about that conversation. She's still waiting for Mike to admit that he said what she said he said, what he said he did. You know what I mean? So Mika keeps bringing it up because she's like, I'm waiting for you to tell the truth. Whereas Taylor's like, look, it happened. Let's move past it, whatever. And Brandon's like, okay, we're moving past it, but nothing else has happened. So like when she came over to help him move, I, I swear to y'all, when she came in, I think she was waiting for Brandon to give her a hug and a kiss. Like, Brandon's not even, he's not even acting like he's interested in her, to be honest. And I think that's what's bothering her. So then when she makes the comment when her dog was humping on, on um Brandon and she was like, oh, you know, he's showing him how it should be done. He needs to learn from Tyson and man up. And, you know, then she says okay I know you tired of me bringing it up but you need to give me something else to talk about give me something positive to talk about meaning he's not even Brandon is just there at this point it's like and I don't know if it's because he's really not interested or if he doesn't know what the next step should be because he doesn't know if he tries to hug her, if he tries to kiss on her, if he tries to make the next move, is she going to shut it down because she's still pissed? You know what I mean? So I think that's Taylor's hang up. She's waiting for Brandon to make the next move and he's not. And I think she's frustrated with that. All right, moving along. So Zach and Mindy. They meet up at the dog park looking like an episode of Catfish. I know how on Catfish when they end up meeting to see who the person really is it's always in the park somewhere and that's the first thing that came to my mind but anyway so they're there um they have a little small talk about work um he asked her you know like what did she think about um what pastor cal said and you know she's like um you know she didn't have any expectations but at the same time, she thought that after they met with Pastor Kyle, she was surprised that Zach still didn't move in. Because remember, when they met with Pastor Kyle, and Pastor Kyle made a comment like, okay, if y'all going to make this work, you know, you have to be in a comfortable place. And to start with, you can, like, live together. And I think she thought that he was going to move in. So she said she was surprised that he didn't and she was like you know she feels like he owes her um an apology and an explanation as to you know why she feel like she's going through this alone so he was like you know he can only do the best he can do um you know he's going to continue to try to get to know her and you know he values their friendship <laughs> so mindy was like um yeah okay but we're not friends we're married and to that he was like you know he's still he's still in this um he hasn't backed out yet like basically just be patient with him the fact that he hasn't walked away pretty much she should be happy with that that's that's how it came off um so she was like okay so what's the next step because the thing is and i get it it's like all right you're not giving her anything you're okay you haven't moved in yet you're saying that you're still in the process you're still hanging in there but yet he's not initiating anything you know what i mean so it's kind of like if it wasn't for pastor kyle calling for the meeting like for him to come over would he have come over like when would she see him again if she's not the one taking the initiative because up until pastor kyle came over and they met with him she said she's called and text um zach and he hadn't been over there so when he came over that day with pastor kyle that was the first time he came over so she was like you know um what's the next step 
Like, what are we doing? And, you know, he told her they can hang out more. And, you know, she said she was open to that. So he showed her he was still wearing his ring. And, of course, you know, that melted her heart. Like, it doesn't take much to make Mindy happy at this point. She was excited that he still had um, his ring, that he was wearing it finally. Anyway, so later on, they meet up with the friends. And Zach is just overkill he's complimenting mindy you know what she's wearing he's showing her you know he has his ring on he's acting like he's so present in the marriage you know so but y'all know mindy friend mallory was there <laughs> so they sit down and um mallory which is mindy's friend she wastes no time pouncing on zach so she's like you know how does it feel no she asked him how does he like the new apartment that he doesn't live in and so it's Zach, Mallory, Mindy, and I believe Mindy's male friend. I don't know if it was Zach's friend or Mindy's friend. I can't remember. But it was four of them sitting at the table. And, um, yeah, so Mallory was like, you know, how do you like the apartment that, you, that you're that um, you not even living in? And he's turning beet red he's turning red he's looking over at mindy <laughs> and so he said um you know that he hangs out there and um mallory was like oh really oh you've been hanging out there so then zach changed it up because he knew he he first of all he was lying and he knew that she knew he was lying so he changed it up and he was like um well um i have intention of coming over there you know hanging out and the whole time he's looking at Mindy like, please make her stop. Because Mallory was just, she just wasn't letting up. She was just going, just, just coming for him. And at one point he said, um, what did he say? He was like, can you please? And he was like, please don't or something like that. And she was like, oh no, but I have to. Like she, was not, she was not letting up on Zach. Um, anyway, so she continued to grill him and he just looks so uncomfortable and annoyed so in mallory's confessional she was saying that you know she still doesn't trust zach um which isn't surprising she was like you know basically he is full of it full of bs and she hopes that mindy sees him for who he is you know that's her friend she doesn't want to get hurt so later on they're back at the apartment mindy's friends are there and of course they're just trashing zach they're talking about him how they don't trust him how they feel like he's full of bs and they're not feeling him and they're you know pretty much like trying to get through to her and so she's like yeah i hear y'all and everything but i'm still committed and he's on his way over i invited him over so they kind of looking like now we just sat up here trying to have this girl's back and she's still not only staying with him but she done invited him over while we're here so zach shows up with one of his dogs and you know no doubt it was to be a buffer okay that's why he brought the dog which worked a little bit so um because he knew he knew her friends was gonna because she he knew the friends was gonna be there mindy told him anyway he comes in and he brings wine and um what did he say something about Oh, so she was like, you know, I, I, I have the the box wine, you know, I knew that you liked. So we have that. And he was like, okay, we can drink both or, you know, um, save the other for later, you know. Something like give me a reason to come back over here. And then he was like, well, you know, among other reasons. I'm like, dude, you <laughs> really? The wine is going to be the reason for you to come back to your apartment with your wife? Okay. So anyway, um, yeah, so they sit down and the friends are just, it's almost like as soon as he sat down, they were like bees, they were just coming. And, um, they started questioning him again, going through the whole thing. And Mindy, she immediately put the brakes on it. You know, on the interrogation, she was like, look, you know, she was like, I get that y'all my friends, y'all care about me, you, you looking out for me, I know how this looks, how this comes off, she was like, but 
I am committed to this marriage. I'm committed to making it work and I have faith that it will and it is what it is, you know. She wants to see it through. Now, one good thing about it is Zach Dog loves Mindy. I mean, he was all up on her lap, licking on her and whatnot. So, and of course she loved that. But yeah, so that is it. Zach, I I don't know. I, you know, it's to the point where I, I don't even want to try to figure out Zach anymore because, of course, with her friends being around, you know, he did show her more attention. I still, it still doesn't make sense. I think everybody, her friends, Pastor Cal, I know myself, I'm pretty sure some of you, it's like, you keep saying you haven't given up and you still want to stay married the least you can do is move in and sleep in the second bedroom she would be fine with that so that's the part it's like if you want to convince and i don't understand that because it's like dude you pretty much still have it good because you can go and sleep in the second bedroom not even really deal with her except for like to sit down and eat breakfast or dinner with her watch tv because you've already let it be known i'm not feeling you so i don't think she's gonna try to come on to him physically you know try to touch him you're in another bedroom so it's kind of like you still have it good you still can avoid her but yet look like you're trying but with you not moving in at all so i mean i know it seemed like zach has you know his reasons for being on the show i'm pretty sure you know he's on there for exposure whatever but when you think about it at the end of the day how do you really look how do you think you look to other people because from the outside me looking i'm looking like you're a bullshitter like you're rude you are heartless I feel like you're playing games so it's not you're you're not being presented in a positive light you know what I mean so I mean other than you getting a modeling gig nobody's going to deal with you but anyway that is my review on Married at First Sight season 10 episode 8 sorry it's so late you guys Please leave your comments below. Let me know what you thought about this episode. And until next time, take care.